Okay, I just finished up the video of top 10 things I hate about this machine. I'm gonna go right into the top 10 things I love. Now, overall, I'll do a separate review on my overall opinion. These are more like little Easter eggs or little features that I was like, oh, that, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Or things that I really like about it. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a complete review. This is just, hey, top 10 reasons you should look at this machine. So let's get into that. All right, I'm gonna do the same format. I'm basically gonna start with the things that are cool, but not the coolest, and go all the way to the things I absolutely love. So number one is two inch standard receiver. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. Everyone on a farm that has a truck is gonna have a bunch of two inch size gear. That's recovery hooks, shackles, standard two inch balls, two and three quarter inch balls, one and a half inch balls, so you don't have to go out and buy new. This thing can actually tow 1,500 pounds. That's pretty decent for a 700cc machine. And you don't have this little dinky ball in one or one and a half inch receiver, whatever it is, that goes into most four wheelers. It comes standard with a two inch from the factory. Um, when we went to pick it up, I put in the two inch shackle that I use for recovery when I go surf fishing, had a loop, easy to tie down. This is sweet. Maybe most of them do, but I think all side by sides and four wheelers should come with a standard two inch receiver. Super handy. All right, number two. This is kind of uh, silly. These switch knockouts are awesome. Are awesome. Are awesome. And even better, they go right into your fuse box. So your fuse box is under this bonnet. I showed that in the other video. Hood, I'm not British, but I feel like it should, it's not really a hood. Your fuses are right there. So you got knockouts for switches right there. Your fuse is right there. It's gonna be adding accessories to this, super easy to wire. Um, and you don't have to drill random holes to have random buttons. This will allow me to, if I get bored with this, add a light bar, add a winch, work a radio in here somehow, uh, add more lights, you know, fog lights to it. I don't know. I just think it's cool that they had the thoughtfulness to go ahead and design that in. Number three is going to be the overall family friendliness of the design. I know that sounds weird, but family is super important to me. My almost four-year-old can access the door handles. I know I said they were tough uh, with an engineering miss. He can step up here, reach in, open this up. He can crawl in here himself. He can almost buckle himself. The seatbelt has a little bit of tension on it. He can unbuckle himself. He can unbuckle his little sister. If you do it for him, he gets mad. So he's very secure in this. Um, we tell him, not, don't take your seatbelt off until it stops. He's got that down. He can access basically all the controls. This clip is a little heavy. I can't tell I took the nuts off the front. I thought they looked goofy, they were in the way. Um, when you're in the cab, you got a grab handle here on the passenger side. You got these side bolsters, which are really nice. They sort of make you feel secure. Uh, here, I can rest my arm here. So it's just, overall, it's really, really family friendly. I already went over the comfort of the cab. Um, but they have some family friendly features here, which is nice. He can climb in and out. My little girl can almost climb in and out. It's a little bit of a drop, but it's a family friendly machine, family friendly design, family friendly controls. All right, this one's a little silly. Probably shouldn't have made the list, but it's got interior accent lighting, uh, which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, the, hold on. I think we gotta flip this switch. Gotta have the ignition on. But if you see back there, see how it's lit up? That's cool. Um, I don't know how often I'll use it, but I like the fact that it's there. If you were unloading the cargo bed, you see the light bleed through right there. That's a really nice feature to have. Uh, I guess it's along the same lines. 12 volt power right here. That's nice. Uh, I think, I don't know if there's 12 volt up front. I don't think there is. Um, but the fact that you have a 12 volt right there. Now granted, if I'm gonna do some something heavy where I need to plug something in, I have a Honda generator right over there. Maybe I'll review that one day, it's sweet. But I don't know, if you wanted to charge your phone, if you were out and wanted to plug in a radio, you could get an inverter. The fact that you have instant access to 12 volt is pretty sweet, along with those interior lights, as long as you don't forget to turn them off and bleed your battery. I think they are LEDs, so that's probably not gonna happen, but a little thoughtfulness with the electronics. Number five. <whistles> this guy. So he's got sweet suspension. I know it's not race suspension, it's not Honda Talon, it's not uh, Polaris, you know, sand rail type suspension, but this thing is smooth. The tires and suspension work together super well on old farm lanes. Um, I'm used to running up and down them in my, again, my 99 Silverado. 
if you go over 15 miles an hour, you're shaking all over the place. The old golf cart we had, same thing. Um, you hit a couple of those bumps and it, it really jars you. They've got the suspension on this thing figured out. Um, it's not a player's razor. It's not a racing machine, but it is super smooth. Uh, you can cruise, again, on lanes that I'm used to going 15 miles an hour on, you can cruise 25, which doesn't sound like that. It doesn't sound that fast. Uh, it's fast enough. You get there a lot quicker and you're comfortable. It's not jarring you. You're not getting out with your back sore. They did a really good job on the suspension. All right, number six, something I complained about in the last video, the transmission, guys. Um, that is a lot of the reason I wanted the Honda. These are your paddle shifters. You have true gears. Um, some people have a side-by-side -side with a belt-driven transmission and they get years and years and years of use out of it. Other people, when I was researching these, I called the dealer that sold Honda and Polaris and he's like, well, it depends on how you break them in, how you treat them. I blew the belt on my razor in the first two hours. I'm thinking, you work at a dealer, maybe you drive like an, you know, drive like an idiot, um, but you blew a belt in two hours? I don't wanna deal with that. The fact that this thing has a transmission, it should be a lot more reliable long-term. Honda's been building vehicles for a long time. The fact that they're using a similar automotive style transmission is huge for me. The paddle shifters are sweet. If you want to mess with it, if you want to commit to it, um, if you're towing something, I'm sure it would be more beneficial having gotten that far into it. Uh, the fact that this thing has a transmission is awesome. Now, it is a little weird. Um, you get shift shock when you're used to riding in a side-by-side, -side, you don't get the doo -doo, doo doo And it's not clunky, it's just, it's normal. Um, but I love the fact that this has a transmission. And this didn't make the list, uh, but since we're right here, your tilt adjust wheel, uh, I don't know if I can do it with one hand. Hold on. That's cool. And part of the reason I really wanted a 2023 was because it came with that. I was afraid that I was going to be too fat or too big to fit in here. I'm 6'3", 240, 240-ish. Um, and the fact that this entire wheel and gauge cluster moves, I thought was going to be a big deal. Again, I can sit here with my three-and-a-half-year-old on my lap. Um, no problem. So you'd have to be super, super fat. To not fit actually the comfort of the cab i think that's on the list we'll see but transmission that's number six man i should have looked at my list comfort of the cabin um and design is number seven so again i can sit here uh, i don't know how you're gonna be able to see this but getting in and out it's gonna be it's not tough it's just you gotta pay attention uh hopefully you can see this i'm trying to pull this out i have plenty of room again this wheel is going to tilt up and down Get, get a kid that sits right there. Now, part of the reason I bought this was the four up design, which I'll get into in a second. Our family can fit here pretty comfortably, um, especially compared to a golf cart. So I can sit here, have one kid on my lap. My wife can sit here. A kid can either sit between or sit on her lap. So it's spacious. If you're a big guy and you're worried about it, you'll be fine. As long as you're not like, I don't know, maybe six, six or six, seven. Plenty of knee room right here. You can rest your foot here. Um, there's plenty of room, which I was worried about with a mid-size machine or what they want to call a mid-size machine. I said, am I going to be too big for this thing? Not at all. Uh, very, very comfortable. Now I haven't gone on any, you know, 10 hour trail rides and I don't plan to, that's not why I got this machine. Um, uh, but I'm very comfortable in it. You can sort of slouch, still have plenty of knee room. I mean, could it be bigger? I guess, but it is not an issue for a, what I would consider a pretty large guy. Going into the comfort and cab design, this is clutch, okay? This rear compartment and the fact that you got four up is huge. I bought this machine because I'm cheap and I only wanted to buy once. I wanted a machine that I could grow with my family. So again, right now, this three across, actually it's two and a half. They call it, a, it's a four seater, not a five seater. Uh, but you can fit four people up here, no problem. But my kids are growing. And eventually, you know, even now, I say, you want to sit in the front or the back? Half the time, I want to sit in the back by myself. I want to sit up front. The fact that this flips so quick is really, really sweet. Really, really sweet. Really, really sweet. And in my things I hate video, I said, well, you know, it's, uh, once you have the seats up, you can't use the cargo area. And it is annoying to take the extra time, but I'm going to show you how easy this is. I just kicked the trash can. Sorry about that. So you unbuckle this, that automatically flips down. This has storage right here. So you take that, actually, I think you use this, and just hold it up there. Ugh. Maybe it's harder than I thought with one hand. 
Okay, now your seatbelt's tucked away. Now, if you wanna lower this seat, they didn't know how to do this at the dealer. The door has to be closed because the latch for the seat, actually, I think it has to be open, then you have to close over time. We'll figure it out here in a second. But it's a pretty, a pretty simple process at the point. At the dealer, they didn't know how to do it. There's a little lever right here. You just push it up, that starts to fold. Before you do that, I forgot. And again, it's a lot easier with two hands. I'd be done by now. Um, you flip up this, this cushion. Stores right there. Easy peasy. I relatched it by accident. Come back here. Sorry for the jarring camera angles, guys, but pull that lever, push this down. Okay. To lock it, this door has to close on this latch. Now you have a thousand pound bed capacity. This, I mean, this goes, and you can ride like this. I've done that before. We had to go over to my dad's, got something here. One of the kids sat back here, uh, but a super, super smart design. Very easy once you're used to it. If you're using two hands, it's even easier, uh, but very, very happy with the seating, the overall comfort. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about. Well, first of all, I will show you how to get it back up. It's just as easy. That locks in. Pull this latch. This tab doesn't lock in, but these two posts right here, two clips, they clip in right here. Now, an adult can fit back here. A big adult can fit back here. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do it with the camera, but I'll do my best. So, climb in, and ooh. And ooh. Ooh. Again, would I wanna ride back here on a 10 hour trail ride? No. Can I ride back here comfortably at six foot three, 240? Yeah, I can. Um, knee room, it's kind of like sitting, in, again, in the back row of an SUV. It's not awful though. I mean, and I don't know, I guess I'd let my leg flop over. I'd be comfortable back here. Again, I don't want to do it. My brother's done it a couple of times, but it's not hateful. If you're just running across the farm or I don't know. You're not going to want to get in and out as an adult, you know, every five minutes, but it, it's, it really could be a lot worse for a four seater on such a short chassis. All right. I might roll in some footage. I might not. Um, but number eight is the sheer power of this thing. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Again, it lacks top speed, which I knew going into it, but it is extremely capable. It has a lot of grunt. Um, it's very capable going up hills. So there's one spot on the farm. It's a meadow with a pretty steep grassy hill. Sorry for that truck going by if you heard that. Uh, meadow with a grassy hill. Everything slips going up it. Um, my truck slips, the golf cart slipped. You wouldn't even try it on the golf cart. The truck you'd have to put into four wheel drive every time. Um, it goes right up that, no problem. I have not had to use four wheel drive on this. Now I haven't taken it on anything crazy. I've crossed a small creek in it. I've gone up some pretty, what I would consider steep inclines where I've had other vehicles slip. This thing just has the power to get it done. Could it use more top speed? Yeah, you always could. But 95% of the time, there's not, there's not many places many people are gonna go where they can utilize the full speed of a machine. And I like the fact that this has enough power. Uh, and I'll get into that in my overall review. It's, it's not enough to scare you. It's enough to get the job done. This thing, this thing gets it, it does what it needs to do. It is not lacking for power. It's just lacking for a top gear. Overall power and capability is great. All right guys, that brings us to number nine, this guy. The power steering is another reason I was drawn to this machine. Now you can get power steering in almost any machine now. I know uh, Polaris 570 has EPS, um, but I wanted EPS, not because I needed it, because when my kids are ready to drive this in a couple of years, when my wife drives it, I don't want it to jar them. I don't want it to be a bear to turn. The power steering system in this thing is flawless. That is the primary reason I went to the Deluxe. I needed power steering. My buddy has a Polaris 900 without power steering. When you get in that thing, compared to this, it sucks. Power steering system on this is sweet. It's soft, it's responsive. Uh, it makes it a lot more enjoyable ride, makes it a lot more user-friendly. All right, what's the best thing about this? It's the chassis. It's the chassis. The fact that you have such a short wheelbase for a four-seater machine, four adults could sit in it, is huge. 
I'm very, very lucky. My dad has two, my dad has multiple trailers. We picked this up with a 20 foot uh, trailer. We also have an aluminum trailer. This should fit on it. Weight wise, you're probably close to the top, but I don't think you'd have an issue. When you get into a four or five seater machine in any other make, you have this long chassis that looks like a wannabe limousine, looks like you would high center, it looks goofy. And I know they're cool, you know, the, the Polaris Razor four seaters look sweet, they got turbos, they're, they're long wheelbase. The fact that this has such a short wheelbase, it's a lot more maneuverable. Now, what do you give up? You give up using your bed, like I've said multiple times, when your seats are up. But the fact that this can fit four people on a standard two-seater chassis, to me is huge, I love it. This roll cage looks goofy, it's necessary, it protects everybody. Um, that's the one thing I don't like, the fact that this whole roll cage goes, but it does not affect the tilt of the bed. Um, but you're getting a really capable machine in a smaller package than any other competitor makes. Nobody else has that flip up design. The quick flip four, Pew! it's awesome. Um, that, you know, that's why I wanted this machine because you fit four people for a growing family, for a side by side I plan on having for at least a decade, if not more. Um, you're fitting four people in a two seat, two seat chassis. It's really sweet. I'm happy with the design. I'd love the seat flip ups. Just gives you options, man. And it's not such a pain to tow somewhere. Again, you can grab a small trailer where you get that extended wheelbase. You're going to need a bigger trailer. Um, and again, I have it, but I really don't like pulling that 20 foot trailer. So it's a really sweet machine overall. We'll do the full review where I say why I bought this one. You already heard some of it, but those are the really standout features that after using it for a while, I'm like, man, that, that's really cool. I'm, man, that, that's really cool. I'm, man, that, that's really cool. I'm glad that's there. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Again, I don't know how YouTube works. Everybody says like and subscribe. I'm going to ask you to do that so I can get more than one or two views. It makes, makes it more fun. If somebody actually enjoys what I'm doing, if, it, if it's helpful, um, I appreciate a like and subscribe. Again, in the comments, if you have any questions on this particular machine or any of the competitors, I've done all the research. Uh, I, I'm not saying I know it all, but I know more than the dealer because I spent nine months arguing with them and trying to figure it out. And uh, It's a good machine. If you, if you want my input, just ask.